A show looking at local, global and national issues affecting the youth of today. Now on today's show we are discussing the causes and effects of teenage pregnancies. What kind of impact does it have when a child goes to their parent and says they're pregnant? Okay, how does the community react? How does the family react? That's what we're discussing today. Assalamu alaikum. As school show amra matata khorran, khoto amra ar boina naso and young boina in tantain biara ge mao isain. আর একটার এফেক্টে ফ্যামিলি রেখে লাসাতা একটা খিত তেন তেন বাদে ফরা লেখা খরতা ফারো ইনি খিতা খরা লাগে মা বা ফারুফ রে একটা মানে একটা দায়িত্বই যায় একটা লইয়া খিলা রিয়াক্টিং করেন ওটা লইয়া আমরা আজকু মাতখতা খরান আপনারা প্লিজ যে দেখরা আপনারা যেন জানেন কে ইলা সিচুয়েশন ওইসন ইয়াং থাকতে তাই মা ই গেসন তে আপনারা ই সিচুয়েশন লিয়া খিলা আপনারা ডিল করছেন ওটা লই আমরা লগে কন্টাক্ট করো কা আমরা মাতখতা করমো নাও বিফোর উই গো এনি ফারদার আই লাইক টু ইন্ট্রোডিউস দ্য গেস্ট অফ মাই শো আই এম ডিলাইটেড টু হ্যাভ থ্রি guests who provide very different perspectives on the topic that we're discussing today. We have uh, Nayla Naidu, who is a community worker and the founder of New York Muslim Women's Association. Uh, we have Rahma Ali, who's a special guardian. And we have Hana Chowdhury, who is a university student. So we look forward to listening to their views. So thank you for coming on the show. Okay. Uh, as always, this show is live on Facebook. So, you know, if your loved ones are out and about on the streets, you know, they don't have to miss out on the show. They can watch it uh, if they go onto our Facebook page. The number is on the screen. We really want to hear from you. What do you think? Is this a topic that's affected you, your family? How, what, what's been the kind of response? That's what we're after. So please do get in touch. And as always, you know, uh, the email is on the screen. Get in touch with us uh, and call us as well so that you as well can get involved with the discussion. Nail, I'll start with you. Okay. With teenage pregnancy, a lot of the time, the focus tends to be on the girl. Okay. Um, does the guy get off lightly? Well, the guy, obviously, they get away lightly because they don't have to have that conversation with their parents and it's easy for them to deny responsibility. And also, from the community, they get away lightly because when people might see a young couple out and about, the judgment always tends to be on the girl more than the guy. We have this thought that girls should protect themselves and we focus more on that on, than sometimes on the boys' behaviour. And that reflects on how we treat our boys. Like we let boys go out, we don't sometimes know where they are, and that is the result. The boys end up getting off lightly. Mm. But I think, uh, Rama, coming to you, would you, in this you know, day and age that we live in, would you say it's just the boys who go out and about? Or could you argue that girls tend to be much more outgoing now than, say, uh, a decade back? I think girls are more outgoing, and, but it's a little bit more not as open. So the boys, it's like a norm. They expect it. They're going to go out, but the girls might not always be open about it and still do it. Oh, okay. So I don't think it's different for boys or girls. They will be going out. Sure. Okay. Um, Hannah, you provide obviously the student perspective, which, you know, in campus, say, do you feel as though now that we know more and more girls, even within the uh, you know, Bangladesh community and are going to university, do you feel as though that has given them that kind of opportunity to go and do things that, say, previous generations might not have done? Um, potentially, I do, um, because it is, university is a very open atmosphere. There's, there aren't many restrictions, but at the end of the day, it does come down to the individual's decisions. Okay, thank you for that. Um, coming back to you, Neela, um, at that age, you know, when you're a teenage girl, and, you know, mm -hmm. mashallah, I'm sure it wasn't many years ago <laughs> before you were a teenager yourself, um, <laughs> Do girls not think at that age, you know, this guy uh, that they might be in a relationship with, you know, there's a chance that this person might, you know, I might end up getting pregnant and this person might walk off. The very thing that you said, they might actually leave that relationship and it's so easy for them to do that. I think that sometimes young girls can be quite naive and they can be quite trusting and if they have, if they think they have strong feelings towards someone, mm -hmm. they would trust that person and also, people go to where they listen. So if they feel that this person listens to me, he respects me, he mm. meets my needs in a way that other people in their life might not listen to them, then they will be likely to believe them and trust them and mm. not think in that way. 
Sure. Um, like we said at the start of the show, you know, this is a very relevant topic in our community. So please, you know, you've got the number on the screen. Uh, you know, do get in touch with us. Tell us what you think. Do you agree with what our, our experts are saying on the panel? Or do you feel that, you know, from your personal experience, it's not as easy and straightforward as that? So please do get in touch. Afnara, please. Show Luga Show Rikoka. Afnara Kitabu Zoin. Amra Khotoboyna Nasoin. Biara Gem Maui Zain. Ikta Luya Kila Effect Hore Family. Afnara Kitabu Zoin. Please, Amra Contact Korea Show Rikoka discussion. Coming back to you now, Rahma, um, how big of a factor do you feel peer pressure is for teens who end up uh, getting pregnant? I think it's massive. It's everywhere. It's social media. It's everything. It's, you know, it's, it's a big factor and we need to think about it more sure. and assume that that's not our problem. Our children might not be engaging in this, mm. but it's there. Mm. It's valid. Sure. Thank you. Um, now, Hannah, would you say, you know, at university, say university, college, you've been to college as well not so long ago, would you say, you know, coming back to the question about peer pressure, what have you seen to, you know, so for us to understand, you know, the point that uh, Rahma's made? Well, um, I agree with her point because younger teenagers, 13 to say 17, 18, are very easily swayed because they're still trying to find themselves. So what they'll do is they'll latch onto anyone that makes them feel that they're safe and they've got someone to confide in. Whereas if you're at university like I am, I think you've pretty much, you know, you know you're an individual, you, you can make, you know, more adult decisions mm. because you are grown up now, but as a teenager it's incredibly difficult. Sure, okay, thank you. Uh, we will be watching a video about, uh, you know, the very thing that we're talking about. And um, so, uh, do uh, I'll, uh, just a word to the producer that we will be coming uh, for that video very soon. Um, coming back to you, Neela, would you say, you know, there might be some cases where it's uh, child sexual exploitation, where it might be a case where the child is underage, mm -hmm. but the person, uh, the, uh, the other person, you know, the guy is an adult. Yeah, I what think do you do in that situation? I think definitely both online and offline, this occurs. Mm. And we often see younger teenagers, like 14 or 15, with older guys, maybe in their 20s. And there's an imbalance of power in this relationship. So when you ask, don't they think that they might get themselves in bad situations? When there's someone older that they trust and is more experienced, they're able to manipulate them in that mm. way to follow the things that they want them to do. Sure, so, OK. Um, so can we, uh, we sh uh, we'll be watching a short video now, okay, uh, very soon. So uh, producer just said, yeah, it's, uh, it should be on very soon. Um, in terms of Rahma, w w what's your view on, you know, a, a teenage girl who would risk pregnancy for the guy she loves? You know, we're in a society where, you know, Bollywood, Hollywood, whatever you want to call it, you know, can uh, create this illusion in people's head, you know, this kind of uh, depict it in a way it's not particularly true. What's your view on that, you know, someone that they love and they think, you know, I trust this person? I think that sometimes when the young person's needs are not being met at home, it makes them very vulnerable to the outside impact. So, like, an older person that might meet their needs that are not being met at home, they feel comfortable and they will put them above everything else. Sure. So... So they decide to go and obviously pursue... It's just about support. Avenues. I mean, if the support is there and you don't feel judged as a young person, you don't feel you're going to be criticised or I've done something terrible, I can't go and tell my mum, I can't tell my aunt mm. because I might be shunned, I might, I might, they, they will not support me, so I've got to keep it a secret. Mm. Then somebody else comes along, knows that vulnerability, they will take over, make you feel, you know, looked after, supported. Sure. And so in most cases, this person doesn't have the best intentions for that young person. Mm. But they become a very important factor in their life, more so than their parents in some cases. Okay. Um, Hannah, you know, Rama spoke about, obviously, vulnerabilities. What, are, what would you say are some of the vulnerabilities that may lead to someone looking for, if you want to use it to loosely, a love elsewhere? Well, if I look back to when I was in secondary, um, there are huge things, body image, you know, popularity, those, there are different factors that weigh into this. So if you've got a 14 year old who is trying to live up to all these social standards while trying to maintain, you know, a popular spot in school, while trying to juggle all the different things in life, I mean, while they're doing that, they're, they're also trying to figure out who they are. So, you know, generally, it's really difficult for them. Mm. It's not an easy mm. position for them. That's really interesting. And, um, Naila, research suggests that having family-related problems can also play a big part in some, you know, uh, 
a child going out there and uh, getting into a relationship where it could result in them getting pregnant. Yeah, um, definitely like I said before, if the child doesn't feel safe in the family. If so the when you say safe, I think just for the benefit yeah. of people at home, what do you mean by safe? Well, We've safe got as in there's different emotionally, types. Not yeah, obviously not there's physically. There's different types of safe, mm. so not necessarily abuse. If there is abuse, that would be a factor as well. But also the child needs to be safe to express their opinions, to be able to tell their parents things that they're feeling, things like who they are, express who they are as a person. And if a family is shutting that down and saying, I don't want you to be like that, I just want you to be like this, then they will go somewhere else because they won't feel loved, they won't feel cared for, they won't feel listened to. And I feel often in families we have this idea that we want our children to be perfect, they have to be meet up to these standards, we compare them to other children, and that can be emotionally damaging. When you're comparing a child to their cousins or to your friends' children all the time, you're then setting the bar so high that mm -hmm. it feels that they can't reach that. So they feel anything they might do is just not going to meet those expectations. Mm. And but do you think, Rahma, it's just the case of, are we saying that anyone who does have that stability at home and gets, you know, is listened to, that they're not likely to go out and get involved in a relationship? Is that what we're saying here? No. I'm saying that... In most cases? Yes. In, in some cases where the child's need, you know, the young person's needs are being met at home, they're stable emotionally, but they're growing and they're learning. They want to be experiencing life in their own way as well. But I think it can happen to anyone. It's just part of finding yourself as mm -hmm. a young person. It's not necessarily, they, there can be other factors. It could be that the parents are amazing and they're meeting all the child's needs, they're listening to them. But then the child is not always at home. The child's at school, the child is in some kind of um, activities where they're meeting and mingling with other people. So if the child felt like they could come home and talk about some other topics maybe they discussed in school, that they feel like, okay, my parents would be okay with this, then they'll come home and talk about it. But in some cases, even in those type of families, there are some things that are no-go area. So mm. the child might not discuss it, but will be curious. So they might try something. Thank you. Okay, um, the video is ready, so we'll go straight into the video and we'll carry on with our discussion. Child sexual exploitation is when a child or young person is knowingly or unknowingly coerced into sexual activity that's inappropriate for their age. The young people are often groomed um, by the giving of gifts or money or drugs and alcohol, um, but the purpose for the adult is to exploit that child for sexual purposes. sometimes involves trafficking the young people, it sometimes uh, involves uh, a grooming process that befriends them, though sometimes also it can be um, more brutal than that. In exploitation you've got, you've got individuals, you've got groups and you've got gangs and uh, all three of those may be involved in exploitation and all of them may be online or all of them may be uh, on the street uh, in, in or both of those issues at the same time. CSE is a, a child protection issue and as we say in all elements of safeguarding then it's everybody's business. The perpetrators uh, can be male, they can be white, they can be black, they can be of different cultures, um, uh, as can the victims in this situation. Boys are victims of sexual exploitation as well. Women are involved in, in perpetrating sexual exploitation. I think it would be fair to say that um, there certainly isn't evidence that women uh, are as involved as men in sexual exploitation, but there are certainly cases of women being involved in sexual exploitation, and some of them have been in the media, but the media cover them in, in, in different ways. People from all walks of life, 
um, are both victims and perpetrators in, in, in this as well. So it's not uh, socio-economically driven, although there may be impact, impacts on certain communities that are greater than others. It doesn't relate to any particular religion or, or ethnic group. Uh, it, it really is an everybody. So that was, a, that was a video on child sexual exploitation and talking about some of the dangers that are out there. Um, come back to you, Neil, and just kind of uh, carrying on from what, what was uh, covered in the video. Um, sadly, we have you know, people in our community, individuals, groups, who do target girls. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, in a lot of settings, uh, that sometimes they, they get them hooked onto drugs or they get them drunk. Mm -hmm. um, to then take advantage of them. You know, we've got young sisters who are watching this at home. What advice would you give to them? My advice would be to tell someone, let them know what's going on, find someone you trust, maybe a teacher, maybe an auntie, and also advice to the community that if you see a young girl doing something that you disapprove of, like maybe drugs, maybe alcohol, maybe you see them with a man, an older man, don't judge the girl think that this is what might be going on, there might be child sexual exploitation going on and don't necessarily put the girl down and give her a bad name because that's removing the support that might be there for her otherwise. Okay, thank you. Now, um, Rahma, let's take a step back before it actually gets to that stage, you know, because they might, you know, once again, we want to, you know, the telltale signs, we want to warn our sisters, our community before we get to that because yes. that's when the exploitation is almost taking place. Yeah. How, what can we do? What are kind of the preventative measures we can take to try and tackle um, this issue of CSE? Control what, um, control the devices they're using, their access to the internet. I mean, also you can tell like when your child, you know your child's personality, the telltale sign would be something changes in your child. Maybe they become a little bit more withdrawn enjoying spending time by themselves, new group of friends maybe, that you don't necessarily approve of, but at that point, this is when you know. You know your child and you can tell that they're acting differently. Like for example, I have a small boy and he's watching YouTube channels, which is like annoying orange kid stuff. But then I realized that as he's watching that, there would appear some kind of nudity. It's like almost hidden, but I didn't even realize that was happening. So you see, like our kids sometimes have access to our phones. Are we sitting there watching what they're going on? Oh, Is sure. it protected? No. And also, like even if they do have access, control it. So you get reports to check what your child's been accessing. Okay, now well, that's really helpful. Uh, we have to go for a break now, but please do stay with us. And once again, please get in touch. What are your views on teen pregnancy? Why does it why why does it happen in our community with all the kind of uh, preventative measures, the kind of education that's given? Afnara, please. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to young boy. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you.